السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ آئی ہوپ یو آل آر ان گڈ ہیلتھ الحمد للہ سو ان دا پریویس ویڈیو وی ہیو اسٹارٹیڈ وتھ آر چیپٹر نمبر نائن دیٹ از ہیٹ دین وی سو دیٹ ہیٹ ٹراولس فرام ون باڈی ٹو انادر باڈی اور فرام ون پلیس ٹو انادر پلیس وچ از کال ایز ٹرانسفر آف ہیٹ اینڈ ناؤ ٹیل می دا ٹرانسفر آف ہیٹ گوز فرام ہاٹ ٹو کولڈ اور فرام کولڈ ٹو ہاٹ یس Yes, it goes from hotter body to the colder body. Then we saw that there are three modes of heat transfer. What are they? Name me quickly. Conduction, convection and radiation. Repeat again. Conduction, convection and radiation. Very good. Now we saw two modes of heat transfer that is conduction. right what we saw in conduction that transfer of heat from hot part of a solid substance to its cold part means the transfer of heat goes from hotter body to colder body and we require a source of heat for the transfer of heat and we saw that in that experiment the burner or the candle was a source of heat then in the second experiment we saw the convection thing right what do we understand we understand that convection takes place in the form that the water which has become hot in the lower level goes up we has you we had used potassium permanganate crystals right what happened whatever the crystals were there they went up the hotter water went up the cold water came down and in this way the process of convection of heat takes place now today we are going to study about the third mode of heat transfer that is radiation so without any ado let's see what is the third mode of heat transfer that is radiation again we will try to understand about this uh, about this uh, mode by a simple experiment now for that again for experiment we are going to new need few apparatus we are going to need a test tube a piece of ice then we are going to need wire wire gauge a burner and we are going to need a candle okay lastly we are going to need a candle now let's see what is going to be the procedure now take some water in a test tube as shown in the video and wrap a piece of ice okay in a wire gauge in a wire gauge and drop it in the test tube now what will happen it will sink to the bottom okay and now using a test tube holder hold the test tube at a slant see like little bit slant position as shown now heat the upper part of the test tube okay we are going to heat the upper part shown in the test tube now stop heating when the water starts boiling when you see that bubbles are started coming so stop heat stop the heat now observe the piece of ice at the bottom the heat does not reach the bottom even though the upper part is heated why is that so because ice is still contact the ice has not melted so how does how did this happen so the density of water decreases due to heating what happens the density of water decreases due to heating and therefore it cannot sink and the process of convection does not occur understood everybody the density of water decreases due to heating and therefore it cannot sink and the process of convection which we saw cannot happen right what happens in the convection the water which becomes hot below comes up right but this is not the case why because we are giving the heat from the upper side now we are going to perform some another experiment to better understand so we are going to light a candle and stand it upright straight okay now hold your hands okay on its two sides at the same some distance from the candle okay we are going to hold like shown in the image now bring them closer a bit closer what do you feel yes have you warmed yourself near bonfire or in the morning sun in the winter before 
so same thing happens with this the sun is millions of kilometer away from us right but there is no air between the sun and the earth and the earth atmosphere is only a thin layer of the air which is close to the earth so then how does the heat of the sun reach us even though sun is so far away from us then how is the heat reaching us so this heat is transferred in the absence of any medium there is no medium between the sun and the earth is there a wire or a pipe yes between the sun and the earth no there is not right so the transfer of heat that takes place in this way without any medium okay there is no pathway in between there is no road in between without any pathway or without any medium is called as radiations understood so from this example what do we understand that heat reaches us mainly by the form of radiations now a wonder of science radiation of heat takes place from many objects in nature right many objects need heat such as trees the mountains the stones as well as the roads even become hot right sometimes they become so hot that they can burn the tires of the car or any vehicle now a camera has been developed with which uses this radiations to make our surrounding visible at night now at night if there is complete darkness can our eyes see anything in a dark room no but a camera a night camera can still see in the room which is completely dark and that camera is called as infrared camera what is that camera called yes infrared camera and using this camera it is possible to keep a watch on the movements of the enemy during the night even if even if there is complete darkness on the road or anywhere in the any part of the world if it is completely dark we can still observe movement of any enemy or if an, if there is any thief now when heat rays falls on an object a part of the heat is absorbed by the object and a part of it is reflected now as you can see in the image it falls on the house and then again it is reflected so the ability of a substance to absorb heat radiation depends on its color now you must have observed like um, in your sports right during your sports day you usually use a uh, wear white color now why is that so because white color does not absorbs lot of heat and that's why uh, during the sports day you are told to wear white uniform understood so the ability of substance to absorb heat radiation depends on its color understood now our next topic is good conductors of heat and bad conductors of heat now what are good conductors of heat materials which allow the heat to pass readily means like a vessel it is allowing the heat to pass everywhere now if you uh, keep the vessel under the stove only the below part is going to become hot no right the edges are also going be, going to become hot means what the vessel is allowing the heat to transfer in the complete vessel so the materials which allow heat to pass readily are called as good conductors of heat and materials that allow electric current to pass through them are called good conductors of electricity understood you all let's see few examples of good conductors silver copper aluminium brass as well as iron the next concept is bad conductors of heat now a material can be a poor conductor of heat or electricity or both now a poor con uh, conductor means what the substance will not easily conduct heat or electricity as easily okay now uh, you must have observed like when your mom is cooking in the kitchen instead of a steel spoon she uses a wooden spoon why is she using a wooden spoon yes why there can be two reasons why the wooden spoon will not become hot on the other hand the wooden spoon will not uh, cause any scratches on your non stick pans or any other pans 
why because the uh, wooden uh, spoon is a bad conductor of heat heat will not pass in the wood as well as electricity will not pass in the wood so you must have observed that um, when a certain person gets shock okay if it is uh, he is attached to electric wire you use a wooden plank or a, a wooden stick to move him away from that electric current why because wood is a bad conductor now let's see few bad conductors glass then wood water cork cotton wool as well as air okay now our next concept is expansion and contraction now first of all tell me what are the states of a substance three states we know that solid liquid and gas now there can be changes in solid in liquid as well as in gaseous due to heat so we are going to see three concepts that is expansion and contraction of solid substance due to heat expansion and contraction of liquid due to heat and expansion and contraction of gases due to heat now the first thing which we are going to see is expansion and contraction of a solid substance due to heat now again to better understand this we are going to perform a small experiment again let's see what things we are going to need apparatus we will need a metal ring then we will need a metal ball then we are going to need a burner now let's see how we are going to perform this activity <clears throat> now take a metal ring and a metal ball of such size that the ball just passes through the ring we can see that the ball is passing through the ring very easily heat the ball and check whether it passes through the ring now what we are going to do we are going to heat the ball okay we are going to heat the ball and now we will see that whether it can pass through the ring or not and now we are going to try it to insert into the ring right it's not going now let the ball cool down and check whether it passes through a ring or not yes it does now what do we understand from the above experiment is that the above experiment tells us that the metals expand on heating means they become bigger when they becomes hot they becomes bigger and contract on cooling means they become small bit small when they are cool down so solid expand due to heat what is the conclusion solid expands means grow the solid expands due to heat and the solids contracts if the heat is removed understood so however the extent to which different solid expand is different understood so this is about expansion and contraction of a solid due to heat now our next topic is expansion and contraction of liquids due to heat let's do the experiment we are going to need a 500 ml conical flask then we will need two hole rubber stopper as you can see in the image then we will need a glass tube okay then we are going to need a measuring ruler then a thermometer a stand then we are going to need a wire gauge then a burner of course and a graph paper we are going to need a graph paper now let's see what is going to be the procedure now fill the conical flask completely with water okay and insert the glass tube and the thermometer in the two holes the two holes are there in that rubber so we are going to insert them in the two holes of the stopper and we are going to fit it to the conical flask understood like this we are going to do and then we are going to heat the water with the help of the burner okay we are going to heat the water and with the help of the ruler record the water level in the glass tube after every 2 degree celsius rise now we have the thermometer right so uh, when it increases 2 degree we are going to measure the length of the 
water now we are going to take about 10 readings okay we are going to do it 10 times now for example if the degree was um, 60 okay then if it is 62 we will measure the length of water 64 we will measure 66 we are going to measure now we are going to observe what happens when heating is stopped So to explain that we are going to draw a graph to show the change in water level as the temperature rises. First we will start to boil the water and we are going to note down what is the change in the water level. Now when a liquid is heated the distance between its particle increases. What happens when we heat the liquid? When we heat the liquid the distance between the particles of the water increases and its volume too increases now if you have seen like if you have kept a half bowl a uh, half vessel of water and when it start boiling the bubbles go, starts to come to the edge with what we understand from is that this is called the expansion of liquid when we heat the water the water expands and when it temperature falls the liquid again comes back to the normal level understood so this is about expansion and contraction of a liquid so that's it for today in the next video we will see about expansion and contraction of gases due to heat till then be safe take care allah hafiz